You can't go anywhere in the world, friends, without running into the Salvation Army in some shape or form. Uh, working in Southern Africa as I do, I'm meeting Salvation Army workers all the time. It's one of the most amazing ministries the world has ever known, uh, with a greater heart perhaps than uh, any uh, church organization has ever had. And it's a real honor to have the General of the Salvation Army, Linda Bond, with us. She is a Canadian living in London, but she is top dog, right? Yes. <laughs> how's that feel? You've been 15 months uh, now in this position. Yeah. Uh, how's, uh, how's it feeling to be the, the, the one in charge? Well, I, I am from Cape Breton, and yeah. I sometimes think, am I really the general? <laughs> <laughs> so I, sometimes you don't feel like the general. You can do the work, yeah. uh, but the kind of respect and honor you're shown by salvationists, I, and I have to keep remembering, they respect the office of the general. Yeah. But it's just a privilege um, to be in, in the Salvation Army world, because I get to travel a lot and see the Army, it, it's just a great experience. Well, I'm sure it is. Now, uh, just, just for those who are meeting you for the first time, as am I, mm. give me a kind of a general overview of the Army in the world today, just in terms of the essential sure. parameters. Sure. Well, we serve now in 124 countries officially. Uh, they, we, we have Salvationists and Salvation Army work in other countries, but we have to recognize that legally right. before we add to the number. So 124 countries. There's 1.7 million Salvationists, mm. and we have over 100,000 employees, 26,000 officers. So it, it's, it's big. It, it, those numbers sound big, but it's not big when you put it beside numbers of other churches. Yeah, I, actually, I'm surprised to hear, what, 1.3 million, did you say? 1.7 1 million 1.7 million. I, I thought you might say 11.7 million or, or 21.7 yeah, yeah. point, uh, million, uh, which is all the more impressive because in terms of your clout, you know, out there in the yes, world of need, yes. I, nobody can equal you. Uh, well, I think one of the reasons is our visibility, our uniform make people feel like if they see 12 of us and you keep passing by long enough, they'll say, there's hundreds yeah, of you here. Right, right. <laughs> so I think that's part of it. I think the, the other thing is because we, uh, our mission has to do with community impact yeah. and it makes people think there's far more of us than there really is. Well, everybody, of course, uh, thinks of you at Christmas time. You yeah, know, the, yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the little bells and the little yeah. uh, baskets, whatever you call those things, you put the money in, domes of glass or plastic. Uh, but it doesn't matter if a person is denominationally aligned or non-denominationally aligned, a believer or even an unbeliever. Everybody knows the Salvation Army is a uh, charitable ministry you can trust. Yes. Now, that's, that's, that's something that uh, has no price. Well, see, what we try to do is to make sure people know, and we don't always do this as successfully as we should, that it's the love of Christ that compels us. Huh. You know, we, we are church, uh, we're part of the Christian church, but we have this great mandate and have, I think, since almost our first years, that if you are a Christian, if Christ is in you, yes, hmm. you have to do what Jesus did, and that means you have to impact those around you, whether it be the individual or the family or society. So the Salvation Army has never ever lost that sense of mission that we have to practice our faith in very practical ways. When you have the kind of presence you have in the world, and I'm sure as a general you can walk into pretty much any door, um, what does that do for you in terms of your sense of uh, responsibility to that mission? I mean, it would be pretty easy to be distracted, to be caught up in the, uh, just the, uh, the uh, momentum that you have as a reputation, your, your, your presence. Uh, I'm sure there are those who would be wanting to influence you politically. Mm. Uh, how, how, do you, how do you keep clarity and purity in all of this? There is a danger that we could be too uh, concerned about our image at times because we do have a great image. People love us. Mm. Uh, but we do want them to know we're Christian. We, I, I never want the Salvation Army to be ashamed of Jesus. We're really about uplifting the name of Jesus and being Christ-like in, in our mission. We are apolitical. So we tell our officers, we tell our Salvationists, you may have your political view in any country in which you serve, but as far as the Salvation Army is concerned, we're apolitical, we're there to serve the people in the name of Christ. We don't want to jeopardize that. 
Now, um, have you been impacted at all in your worldwide uh, ministry by what's being called the Arab Spring? We, we don't do a lot in the Middle East. We are in the Middle East. Yeah. There's no question about it. We work very strongly with uh, other faiths in parts of the Western world in terms of our community involvement and addressing needs. But one of the things we are very, very clear about is that while we respect as Salvationists other religions, other faiths, uh, other, the, the way other people see life, um, we will not ever surrender our belief that Jesus is the universal savior. Yeah. So we can come together uh, in any country with any religion and say, let's address social needs, no problem. But never to sacrifice our, our main ethos that we are Christian and Jesus is the one who motivates so us. So when you, when you are engaging in those, uh, some of those situations with uh, other religious uh, traditions, is there conflict because of your uh, Christocentric uh, position? Well, you know, I, I can't speak for everybody in the world because yeah. they're doing it. I, I, I find sometimes there's respect, yeah. to be honest. I, 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 this isn't true of all of India, but I've been in the southeast and southwest of India. The, the, the surprise to me was that there is a respect among other churches, among other faiths. In fact, where I was in, I think it was India Southeastern, the Hindus changed the festival because we almost shared property so that we could have our special anniversary. Now that wouldn't happen everywhere, but I thought, you know, we need to be careful sometimes we don't blow this thing out of perspective. When on the ground, uh, faiths actually work together to meet community needs. And I think that has to be the basis of our, uh, of our, our union but not in, in any way sacrificing what we believe about Jesus. Um, the uh, largest uh, Christian denomination, if we want to call it that, uh, is the Roman Catholic yes. uh, Christian body around the world, a very vital body of believers everywhere. Um, does the Salvation Army have any relationship with the, with the Roman Catholic Church? It's interesting with the Salvation Army. For my younger years, we would go to ministerials and we would go to the ministerial with the, the mainline churches and then we'd go to the ministerials with the evangelicals right. because we were comfortable. Yeah. Um, generally, every community, we, we do ask our, our Salvation Army officers to be part of the ecumenical landscape yeah. and that, of course, includes Roman Catholics. You know, the reason I ask the question is because uh, in the work that I do in Africa, I'm running into little Roman Catholic nuns doing some of the grunt work of the kingdom. Yes. You know, I mean, yes, yes. Uh, washing the uh, almost the unwashable, uh, caring yes. for the, yeah. the most pathetic situations I've ever seen. But often, you know, from time to time, I also encounter Salvation Army people doing doing the same work, and yes. I'm I'm thinking there's a there's such a uh, cutting edge, you know, essential ministry of Jesus. Um, persona here. I, I feel humbled by it. I, I, I feel a sense of the holy. I ran into a Salvation Army uh, person in uh, Mother Teresa's uh, oh, yes. main uh, place in uh, Calcutta, mm -hmm. uh, right next to the uh, Kali Temple, you know, the Goddess of Destruction. There's Mother Teresa's place and there was a Salvationist in there yes. as a volunteer. Yes. I was, very, uh, I was very impressed by that. Now, let me just shift gears a little bit. Here you are, a, a, a woman from Cape Breton. Yes. Uh, you're the third woman general, yes, and also the third Canadian. Fourth Canadian. Fourth Canadian. Out of 19 generals. Out of 19 yeah. generals. Yeah. Um, how does this happen? How 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 was it that you you know um, became general? Well, the first I, I would say this uh, by the grace of God. Right. No question. Yeah. In the Salvation Army, Salvation Army officers are appointed. Right. So you just get a phone call, a letter, whatever, saying you are moving from there to there. Right. It's different when you get to the general, mm -hmm. office of the general. We have what they call a high council, and the, uh, the, the territorial leaders of the Salvation Army world will come together. And in that process, and it's a very detailed and a very sacred process, but ultimately the, that process leads to the nomination of candidates for general. So there could be seven, could be nine and you then have a time to pray about that. Will you stand mm -hmm. for, for general? And you come back and they will ask you in front of everybody, you've been nominated, will you stand? 
and uh, you have to, you, you may choose this is the wrong time. Then what you do is when you stand for general, you're all given a, a series of questions that a question committee has come up with that you have to answer in terms of uh, your understanding of the Army, where you see it going in the 21st century, a lot of questions, maybe 26 questions, some personal questions about your own journey. Then you have to give a speech. Mm. So you do all the questions first, then you have to do the speech. <laughs> and basically your speech is generally about how you see the Army now, but how you see addressing the challenges of the future. Then you go to an election time and... And how many are involved in the election? How many involved? I would say you're talking about, oh, I was going to say 100 and uh, I, sh I shouldn't give you the right statistics, but 110, 115 So it's, it's really a small group. Small group that represents every territory yeah. in the world. Right. Yes. And is there a term limit? There is. Uh, if, you're, if you start out young, mm. you can do five years. Yeah. And if they, uh, if to, you know, the majority of the commissioners want you to extend, you can be extended. If you're old, like I am, <laughs> <laughs> you go to 68. Yeah. So I was actually uh, elected. I was almost 65. Right. And so I go now to 2014. I'll have done a, a three years and about a quarter. You're living in London. I am. What's it like living in London? Uh, not a lot of sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> you're, in, you're in for uh, uh, a lot of people this summer for the Olympics, huh? Oh, we don't know how this is going to ever Like, like London, London's gridlocked enough. I don't know I what's know. going to happen with the Olympics. We say it all the time. <laughs> when, we, when we go to the airport, because yeah. the, the, the traffic is mesmerizing, yeah. Every time we go to that airport, we say, how are we going to do this yeah. in the Olympics? Yeah. We actually have had to do flex hours at our international office uh, by request of, of the, the planning committees yeah. to say there's no way they're going to manage unless businesses take on board flex hours. Wow. Well, it's a true honor to have uh, you in our studio. Oh, it's good uh, to be here. And we look forward to... Uh, our future engagement. You know, we have the Salvation Army involved with us every Christmas. We, yeah. we, we have a band in here that plays beautiful Christmas music. And, yes. and uh, you are, without question, a uh, blue chip ministry. Everybody trusts okay. you. And it's uh, very encouraging and inspiring to meet the gal at the top. Thank you. Thanks for coming much. our way. Oh, pleasure. General Linda Bond. Thank you so much, friends, for listening to this great interview. And we look forward to more interaction with the Salvation Army as the future unfolds. We'll be back with more after this.